Hi, let's learn now how to import a QuickTime video for scoring to picture in uh, Logic Pro. And particularly, we're going to focus on how to sync it to our sequence. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to Logic and I'm going to start a new project from a template. I'm going to do so because I highly recommend working at 48 kilohertz in terms of audio. Usually this is what we use for video scoring. I'm going to leave the tempo as it is for now and also the key signature. I will change that later. So with the new sequence on, I'm just going to simply create a new track. And I'm going to go to File, Select Movie, and I'm going to select Open Movie. I'm going to pick the movie that I want to work on. And now Logic is asking me, do you want to open the movie? Of course, right? That's what I trying to do but also extract the audio track this is very important I highly recommend leaving the checkbox on for extract the audio track because this will allow me to have the the voiceover or whatever sound effects is on the movie uh, show up as a separate track in logic and so this will give me uh, full control over uh, the volume of the voiceover so I'm gonna tap OK and now it's gonna tell me to choose simply frame rate. Logic is smart enough to look at the QuickTime movie and pick the right one. So this was done at 29.97, so I'm going to choose use 29.97. If for some reason I'm not sure what the frame rate was, it's very easy to find out. I'm going to look for my movie, I'm going to open it in QuickTime, and I'm going to press Command I. This will bring up the inspector in QuickTime, and here I can see the frame rate, 29.97. So if I want to just double check, I can do it that way. So now that I have the movie in, I need to sync it to my sequence. You can also notice how the voiceover has been imported here. And the voiceover track is locked, which means is locked to simply position rather than bars and bits, which is what, what we want. The next step is to make sure that Logic knows at which simply position the movie starts. Now, as you can see here, I'm at the beginning of the movie and the position of the simply code is 0.59.58.00. That's 0 hours, 59 minutes, 58 seconds, 0 frames. So I need to tell Logic that that's where the movie starts. Now when I say the movie, I mean the file, not the actual picture, because as we're going to see, the picture will start exactly at one hour. I'm going to right-click on the movie and select Movie Project Settings. Here is where I specify where the first frame of the actual file is. So I'm going to just tap there and just insert 0, 0, 59, Now the next step is to close the window here, right click on the movie and select synchronization project settings. Here's where I tell where my bar 1 needs to be in relationship to the movie and therefore the SIMTI code. So if I scroll, I can see that the actual first frame of the movie is 1000000. That's where the picture starts. And so I'm going to say, that's what I want to have. I want to have bar 1 at 1000000. So what happens now is that when I'm at bar 1, the movie will start. We're eating and drinking foods and beverages that are very acidic. It can so now I basically synced or, or linked my bar one with the beginning of the picture. Now, if you remember, there were two seconds before the picture, right? And usually in some situations you have some, some extra seconds before the beginning of the picture, usually is to have a two beep uh, sound. And also, you know, if I want to have some count off bars, you know, that's very useful too. So now how do I go back and make sure that I have some bars before my bar one. Well, I'm just going to go 
right up there in the corner until I see this uh, icon here and I can just drag the beginning of the song and see I just added basically a few bits before so now I'm gonna have two bars and then we are in right so I think this is very useful because it's always nice to have some extra space at the beginning just to make sure that you know if I have to have a count off or have the musicians uh, be ready to record um, it's a little bit weird to just start right from bar one now another very important thing that you want to make sure you have set up correctly is the display up here so if I um, tap here I can go to custom this allows me to customize whatever I see here and the important thing is to see that the SMPTE code of logic match the SMPTE code of the movie Eating and drinking foods. And as you can see, they match, right? Foods and beverages that are very acidic. It can stop. Here I'm seeing hours, minutes, seconds, frames, and subframes. We're not really concerned about the subframes from a music perspective, but see now the two are totally in sync. And this is really, really important so that I can always have a precise location both here and here have a perfect correspondence another very useful thing to have when you score to picture is to have a secondary time ruler here that shows frames and and seconds so to do so it's very simple I can just press control option command and R and that will open up my secondary a uh, timeline uh, set in a uh, simple code that's very useful I also highly recommend opening up the toolbar button again control option command T or you can just click up here in the top left corner and make sure that you have the correct tools that you're going to use the most one that I highly recommend is to have the nudge by frame uh, and also the group option uh, that allows me to turn on and off my groups by just clicking up here how do I configure this toolbar? Very simple. Control click, select customize toolbar, and here you can just make sure to check all the tools that you are going to find useful to use. I also like them to save them as default, so they're always going to be there when I need them. You might also find very useful to have a big uh, SMPTE code display uh, always on top of all the windows. That and, and to do so, you simply go up here again in the display mode pop-up menu and you can select open giant time display this will have a simply display that you can move around is a floating window so it's always going to be visible and um, the good thing is that you can make it as big and as small as you as you want so it's always useful to have there as you can see the movie can be also minimized here so if i close the window it's going to be minimized here when I play it, what it's doing is what it's doing is driving. I can see it here, but if I want to see it bigger, just double click on the actual little movie window, and it will uh, show up. This can also be uh, resized, of course. Here's another example of a different type of commercial that doesn't have a lead before the beginning of the picture. In this case, it's even simpler. So I already started a new logic session. Now I'm gonna just find my QuickTime movie and I can just drag it right on top of uh, my session. Again, I'm gonna have both open the movie and extract the audio track selected. I'm gonna tap OK. And here is my commercial. And as you can see, the beginning of the file corresponds to the beginning of the picture. So in this case, the first frame is at 01000000. So as it was the case before, I'm gonna right click on the movie. First thing I'm gonna go to movie project settings. I'm gonna make sure that the position of the movie is at 01000000. And then I'm gonna choose synchronize project settings. And I want to make sure that bar one 
is also set to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Double check the frame rate. This movie was done at 29.97. Logic didn't complain, so I'm all ready to go. And here's my movie where bar 1 is perfectly synced with the beginning of the picture. Always check that your SIMT code in logic corresponds to the SIMT code printed on the movie. So now you know that the two are perfectly synced. In this case, I would like also to have my giant time display just as a reference, so I can just leave it there and I'm ready to go. Also, I'm going to make sure that the movie track is open up here. And again, if I right click, I can make sure that the movie option is checked. Remember that the next thing to do is to ask Logic to look for cuts in the movie. So I can just make sure to have the marker created from scene cuts selected. The movie is going to be analyzed and now I have all my different scenes up here that corresponds to the different cuts in the movie. That's very useful when we're going to start scoring and we want to have the music hitting certain specific scenes. Once I'm done recording the music, I'm ready to bounce the audio tracks and the voiceover, if there is one, to the new movie. To do so, I'm going to go to File, Movie, Export Audio to Movie. I'm going to choose a folder. I'm going to choose the audio format sample rate and bit resolution. Now Logic is asking me if I want to include the original audio track that was part of the voiceover. In this case there was no voiceover but I would click enabled if I want to include it. Because I already have the voiceover track here I don't want to include it because it's going to be part of the bounce with any other audio. I'm going to click OK, and now the movie was bounced, and here it is.